I want to go do a couple for you. Just to show you how I'm not going to do any damage to this nice table. First, a little yo-yo mouse thing. That's it. A yo-yo, like, watch how easy. My favorite yo-yo mouse thing. Okay, next one. <laughs> I like that one. That was awesome. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good one. <laughs> Don't put that on YouTube. Don't think that'd be fun. Here we go. Here's another one, a little simple one. We're going to do a bunch of harder. I thought it was right. See how easy? Safety. Ooh. Safety. Safety. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are these. Let me try that. Let's do some harder ones. Those are too many. Let's do it. Yeah, those are amazing shots. Let's do now. Let's do a shot for a couple years in the end shots. Just like the Okay, so here's the shot that became famous on ESPN. I'm going to tell you what, I'm never going to get over that for a long time. I've been waiting. When was Florida Delaware, honey? What year? 2013. It's been four years I've waited for this moment again. <laughs> I was totally caught off guard on that. I had no idea it was going to happen. That's amazing. Even in all my practice, I've never made it three times in a row. That's on a seven-foot table. Oh, that, you know what? That's right. This is a nine-foot table. Oh, that's right. I did that on a seven-foot table. This is the first time on a nine-foot table ever. That's a new record. I may never get over that. Okay, I'm over it. Now. <laughs> that makes it dead stop, huh? Huh? Every time you tap it. Bruce, you dogs. No, I saw somebody do one time. I thought I'd try it. <laughs> Bruce, you dogs. Maybe I should explain what that's about, okay? You know, people say, doesn't it hurt the table? Listen, Thank you. that doesn't hurt the table. It puts a little impregnation in the cloth that brushes or washes out when they clean the tables. The, what players are not really, they test this slate from six feet in a fact. They drop a ball from six feet on a bare slate, and that's a chip point of slate. You can do this all you want, it's never going to hurt a table. However, room owners and respect to room owners, you don't just go around starting tapping pound balls. We have a, what you call a no a caution, no tapping rule, or a caution tapping rule in our professional work. Because if you have 25 players in a tournament, the first person does this, next person does that, next person does that, all of a sudden you got five or six little indents that come out later, the next 20 players can't set their shot. Because they always, see, when you do that, the next time you go, it just sits back into place, see? It's like that shot over here. Remember when I had this one? If my wife would have been able to do it, but I didn't let her do it, it would she'd have gone like that. It would, it would, it would, it would go back in the hole. But that comes out. You'll never see that tomorrow afternoon. The bottom line is, is that we do that because when you put two balls on the table like this, pay close attention, Bruce. Take care on the hot dog. Okay? I'm answering your question, Bruce, because I want everybody to get this. Okay? When I put this down, Bruce, you see these two balls are touching each other. But sometimes when you put two balls on the table, they back apart a little bit like that. So when you roll that ball over like that and you roll that ball back, now they're touching each other, creating a higher percentage chance of making a shot. Because if there's two, a space between two balls is called a combination, it's a harder shot. So by putting these against and tapping, you create the perfect scenario of a high percentage shot, if you still are able to stroke it right. Did I answer your question? Yes. Did you mind me? I'll need to call you. I'll have a field day with this guy. I'm going to tell you what. This is about that close to coming with me. Yeah, well, yeah. Please. Okay, here we go now. I'll see where he does. All right, let's do this shot. We got to do a couple more. We're gonna finish up with this one. This, this is the wing shot. I gotta tell you what, y'all may not believe this, but because of Bruce, you being really jovial and stuff, and, and a lot of people, you know, it's, sometimes that bugs people. No, but it doesn't bug me. That's why I made the shot three shots. You got me so down to earth, excited about. Fun, laughter, come bubbling out of the heart. Speech like me, almost the same way, except that I don't use quite as many words. The bottom line is, <laughs> that helped me make that shot, along with everybody else here responding. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Just don't bug me anymore. So okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he knew that was good. Oh, you everybody. You are everybody. I love everybody here. Here we go. This is the shot. This is the machine of SA made famous by Mike Massey. Now there's sounds of pool, you gotta know it. There's duh, there's duh, and then there's bad duh. So there's duh with a tip, duh with a cushion, and duh, did. It's like Morse code. So, so you got these duh, duh, duh. Okay, now what we're gonna do here, 
is we're going to make a... Oh, okay. Now, so I'm going to explain the shot, and then I'll give the official title. The cue ball hits this ball, goes du, du, du. It's like a piano keyboard. Sharp, sharp, flat. Got it? <laughs> then it goes du, 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 <laughs> and if you need cable, my name's Larry. Now, I don't know if I can do this or not. I may have a little bit of a problem. Yeah, my bad. All right, somebody come up. Go ahead, move just, push, just a little bit. Don't push much. Just a little bit. Okay? Just a little bit of a push. Okay, we don't need much. Oh, my God. Q <laughs> has to be vertical. Just watch this show. Yeah. Okay, so you, get, you get the idea. Okay. I think that, okay, and finally, and finally, everybody, we're going to do a few wing shots. Wing shots are my favorite thing in the game. Oh, wait a second. Does anybody play nine ball here? Do y'all play nine ball? Oh, I got to show you something. It's cool. Oh, okay. I'll show you one part. We got six. I'm sorry. Yeah, here we go. Sorry, we got six pots left to use. We'll just use one. There we go. There we go. We got this here. The world championship. And you're, I'm going to get you're playing nine ball for the world championship. And this is your shot. And the ball is here. And the ball is here. And this is your shot. And uh, let's just make it one pocket and have some fun with it, okay? We'll make it one pocket or nine ball. This is your pocket. What do you do? Go ahead. Throw it out, guys. There's 20 opinions. Throw it out. Don't be bad. So. I don't know. I want you to tell me what you would do. Well, I knew. well, Bruce, I think I had a feeling you might have been, but I wasn't going to say that, okay, buddy? I'm honest, you're, right? You're, you're, you're great, buddy. You better not leave that hot dog a very long. I'm liable to grab it. Okay, wait, watch it. All right, now listen. What are you going to do, guys? Come on, nine ball players. You can't. You only got 30 seconds. You got to make a decision. I did. We won't bank into the nine because there's sevens in the way. That's impossible. But that's a good idea. What was that? Well, and how do you do it? <laughs> you got the answer, Bruce. Now finish it. It's a jump draw. The ball goes like this, and it comes around and makes this back in the pocket. Nice. And you guys need to remember this because it's going to come up sometimes in a game. Yeah, the name of this shot is called the Snap, Crackle, Pop, Jump, Nip, Draw. <laughs> You'll hear the snapper, watch the cue ball, come back in the line. Watch this shot. That's not it. <laughs> because now remember, ESPN, you get two tries. Oh my God. Yeah, that's all we got. And in the world tournament, you get three tries. And in Buffalo, you get 39. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're in the suburb of Buffalo, correct? <laughs> so you get 52. <laughs> So here we go. Watch this shot. Watch this nine ball come back to the pocket. Awesome shot. That's not it. Uh -oh. I'm going to tell you why. I've never no missed more. No, this is a five part shot. Five part shot. If you're going to make those statements, you got to remember some five on this one, two on the other one. I have a hard time remembering it myself. I got to watch this shot. Somebody here an opportunity to try and make. I want you to imagine that you're in a world championship of nine ball, and this shot comes up right here. Tell me what you would do in the following scenario. You've got a seven ball and an eight ball sitting like this. You got a cue ball sitting like this, and you got a nine ball sitting like this. World championship, seven seven race to eight. What do you do? I'll give anybody in the room ten tries to draw back. Pretty much an impossible shot. Anybody want to try to draw back? You play a lot. Come on, somebody in here is back. Come on. Well, I got a trick shot for you, right? Come on. Don't remind me to do it. Raise your hand. Say after this shot, just say, "Hey, there's a cue. I got a trick." Hey, got it. Who's the top player in the room? Who is? Right here, Adam. Corey. Adam. Where's Corey? Corey. 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 Okay, I'm not going to embarrass you. Come on down, Corey. No, but here, thank you, Corey. Thanks for coming. You know what's wrong with this shot, right? 
<laughs> Take a look at it before you shoot. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What does that mean? Right? It means you can't go straight in. And, and therefore you can't make the nine. Right. And we'll draw back. Can't really. Right. Uh, uh, it's about a one and about fifty. Yeah, okay. Okay. Just try to just show these players look like that, that have designated you to shoot it as the best player. I want you to shoot it. Try to make the number. Okay, that's one, right? Now they don't know why that's happening because they volunteered you to come up here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do it a couple times to prove that it's that difficult. Go ahead, do it again the same way. I'll decide. That's two, right? Okay. So now, they, now, best player has proven that it's almost impossible. And now let me explain why, and Corey, I appreciate your help. Just because if I get, I want to have the best player do that now. So you pass the test. Okay? You don't win anything. You pass the test. You don't win anything. Now, where is the cue ball? And we're going to explain now why it's such a difficult shot, even though there's still players who think they can make it by drawing it. But he just proved it's not going to work. So therefore, where is this cue ball in relation to the rail? It's on the rail. No, it's not on the rail. <laughs> well, it's actually not against it. It's under it. Let me explain the parts of a rail here before we go any further. Because if I, if you leave here and you go home and you ask the neighbor to come over to go in your place, say, you know, Dr. Q was over at Bison Billiards and he had a ball on a rail. That's where they're going to put it if they don't know anything you're talking about. Okay. So be careful what you tell a person because they're not like pool players that know it's on the rail, under the rail. So I'll explain the parts of a rail so we have the specific nomenclature of a rail. This is actually, if you look at it, it's under the rail, the center of the ball. This is against the rail. This is on the rail. This is over the rail. This is beside the rail. This is way over the rail. Got it? Good. So now when you explain a trick shot, you can now explain it with the exact terminology without having any confusion by the person who's receiving the information. Now. Whenever you have a ball under a rail like this, there's a small problem, right? If you put a coin on a table, you hit this real slow, it doesn't do anything, right? But if you accelerate your cue stick with almost a minimal incline, watch what happens. You see this? Watch this. Watch this ball. Watch this coin. See how it goes over the coin? With almost a level cue. Everybody in this room is jumping balls. They don't even know it. I just proved that. Now on this table they play nine ball all the time. You see these lines? <laughs> I know exactly what to play on table, and I'll tell you what, that wears on a table more than in trick shots. Yep. Yep. Now, so, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm just saying that it isn't the it isn't this that's bothering, it's the landing zone. Everywhere playing lands somewhere, and when the land it lands, it makes a mark. That usually wears out before this even. So therefore, what I've learned to do, I think I'd have two break balls. One up here and one right where it lands. <laughs> that way the room owner wouldn't have to repair the table but about every 13 years. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Well, you're doing it now probably every year, so I, I was saying, I'll be quiet. So there we go now. <laughs> so in other words, when you shoot down on this ball, where's that ball going to go? It's going to come up and out. You have no choice. That's why it's such a hard shot. So if it comes out, you're going to miss it. Unless you do two things. You can try to arc it with a mass A, but that's tough. Or you can try to spin it with the other English and try to make, and you shoot away from the rail, and it kind of stays on the rail, and then kind of hopefully comes back with a perfect osmosis drift reverse dynamic. Now, but that's not the shot. There's a lot better shot here that has you a higher percentage chance to it. You shoot down on the ball to allow for the jump. It's going to jump anyway, make it jump a little more. It comes out to the seven. The seven comes out without hitting the eight ball. The cue ball goes straight up in the air, goes over the eight, two cushions into the nine ball. That's the obvious shot. So just look at that. Sure it is. Well, it's not the bank shot. I just, we just proved that, right? Yeah, of course. Play the nine ball. That's your shot. This is your best shot right here. Watch out. That's your shot Hello. right there. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> the ball the I said it wasn't going to move. Thank you, buddy. So the next time you get that shot again, you know what to do now, right? 